In this video, we are going to learn how to build a unified namespace based Industry 4.0 solution with Ignition SCADA, Hybite Industrial Data Ops Tool, HiveMQ MQTT Broker, and Capware Connectivity Software. And my guest to present and demonstrate the implementation of this solution is Mario Ishikawa. Mario is the CTO and IIoT Solutions Architect at PEC IoT, an industrial startup that helps manufacturers to improve their efficiency and reduce scrap costs through an end-to-end -end analytics system. A quick mention of our sponsors. This episode is made possible by our friends at HiveMQ, who are providers of an enterprise-grade edge and cloud-based MQTT broker. We can check them out using the link below. This episode is also sponsored by the Eclipse IoT Working Group. Please help them better understand who is utilizing open source edge and IoT solutions by completing the IoT and Edge developer and adoption survey using the link in the description below. Welcome to Expert Talks here on Industry 4 Audio TV, which is a series of sessions where we bring in subject matter experts to present on various IoT topics. My name is Kudzai Mandi Teresa, and I'm your host here on Industry 4 Audio TV, where I regularly publish industrial Internet of Things tutorials on this channel. So if you're new here, please do subscribe and click on the notification bell to make sure that you never miss any of our content. Now, over to you, Mario. Thank you, Kudzai. Thank you for inviting me today. So, uh, my name is Mario Ishikawa, and I've been working with software for manufacturing and power companies uh, for the past 25 years. And since 2014, I've been very interested in this change from industry 3.0 to industry 4.0, which in the beginning I was seeing like, how can we use big data technologies, NoSQL uh, tools to make manufacturing and OT better. Um, and today I'm gonna talk to you about unified namespace. It's a concept also known as UNS, and I'm going through a demo on it also in the end of this presentation. So just to briefly talk about PEC IoT. PEC IoT is a company that's helping uh, manufacturers all around the world to become more efficient. We have a product uh, that's an analytics tool for, for manufacturing, but we also provide services to help uh, companies of any size to digitally transform. We are based in Lisbon, Portugal, uh, where we serve the, the uh, European continent and North America. And we also have a, an office in Brazil. And we have customers all over the world. Okay, so here, a general view on the unified namespace. It's important to understand that a unified namespace is not a product or is not a, 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 a kind of system, kind of software. It's actually a concept. Uh, to be considered a unified namespace, it must be edge-driven, which means it must be processing data and collecting data close to the edge, clo as close as possible to the machine. Report by exception, which means uh, instead of having the, the systems pulling for data, it will the, the systems will actually send their information when they change or when there is some relevance. Lightweight, so it needs a, a simple and efficient protocol. And also open architecture, because here what you want is to scale your business, scale your, your, your plant, and you don't want to actually to become dependent of a single solution or a single vendor. So here we can see uh, systems like ERP, maintenance systems, quality systems. We can see PLCs connecting to the unified namespace. And the unified namespace here is composed by a transport layer, which is the MQTT broker, and a data ops layer, which uh, here, Hybyte, in which we actually transform and contextualize data. So the, uniform, the unified namespace, it doesn't present this data, it doesn't persist this data, but you can also use it as a middle middleman in from, like, let's say, the shop floor to the cloud or the shop floor to your front end too. So unified namespace is a term co coined by Walker Reynolds from 4.0 Solutions. Walker Reynolds is an entrepreneur and solutions architect, online educator. He has been running a great community in which he is uh, advocating for this 
for this concept, which he truly believes can help companies become much more efficient. And it, it is really their path for the future. And so I already mentioned the, 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 the requirements, but it's important also to understand what the unified namespace is not and what are these limits. So basically the unified namespace, many people think, okay, a central thing in the factory, it looks like a historian, but it's not the case. A unified namespace is not a historian. It doesn't persist data, as I mentioned before, but it is, it is actually focused on real-time data. So you can think, for example, if you have a SCADA and you have the, the, all the tags in your SCADA, uh, tags that you are collecting from PLCs, internal tags, all these tags actually provide the, the real time, the current context of, of, your, of your project, of your machine, of your area or plant. So the unified namespace actually takes this, uh, this data level to the entire plant and to the entire enterprise. Uh, so it's basically the current state of your factory. And it's important to understand that just like also Industry 4.0, uh, unified namespace is not a revolution, is not only happening on the shop floor, is not only for operational technology, it's for the entire business. So uh, we're not talking just about connecting PLCs, we are talking about collect connecting also CRM, uh, ERPs, and all the other IT systems in the, in the manufacturing plant. So here to help you understand what are we trying to avoid? So typically when we are talking about collecting data or monitoring, uh, we have point-to-point -point connections flowing only in one direction. So here in my example for industry 3.0, what we can say, uh, uh, what's automation, industrial automation, we have sensors sending electrical signals to PLC, PLC having their protocol converted in an OPC layer, to then communicate, send this data to a SCADA system or a MES, sometimes both. And part of this data sometimes also go to the ERP. So we have this unidirectional uh, flow of information. In Industry 4.0, it's important to understand that although communication is something that are already existed uh, in the Industry 3.0, it's not something actually solved. Because in Industry 4.0, uh, the, co the, co the connectivity changes a lot and can become much more complex. So, for, for example, your PLC is not only sending data to a SCADA system. Your PLC might actually be relying on, also on, let's say, suggestions from the cloud. So, a SCADA system, you're going to adjust the set point on the PLC. The PLC is going to process the set point to see if it's feasible and apply to your machine. And, but you're, now in Industry 4.0, you, you might have like a, a machine learning algorithm running on the cloud, and that might have a suggestion to improve the efficiency of that job. And it, it will send this data back to the PLC as a suggestion, of course. It won't change any, directly any, any PLC outputs. But as you see, also the PLC becomes a consumer of data even from the cloud. Uh, but for that, you need security, you need to worry about security, you need to worry uh, also about scalability. So you need to think at, of each node in the, in, the, in the network as potentially not only a producer or a consumer, but both. So if here the PLC was basically just a, a producer of data to the next layer and consumer of the previous layer, here we have actually, it doesn't matter if we, if we try to put so many rules like this, it's, it won't be scalable. Uh, so in, in, the, in, this, in this sense here, if we think in connectivity point to point, let's say if we, if we, need, if we need the data lake to connect the SCADA to get data from the PLC, we have actually a problem here. So if we change the SCADA system, we need also to refactor this connection. Uh, our, so point to point connections will grow exponentially in complexity to a point that it won't actually not only be possible for you to grow your 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 technology, your your system, but it will be impossible to manage simply. So I like to bring here uh, analogy, two analogies actually. One, the first one is about the um, landline phones. Uh, so when the 
telephone was first in, invented by Graham Bell, it was never considered to be a product that would be sold by pairs connected by one one wire, one pair of of, cable, of wires. It was uh, that because that wouldn't be scalable. You you could have like ten telephones in your house and you still would be able just to talk to ten people. Uh, the central phone station. So it's something that was always in the in the idea to allow you to communicate to anywhere in the world that follow the same standard that has a phone that's compatible. And of course, there are some rules. Let's say if you're going to do an international call, you have to dial plus or, or sometimes in some places zero, zero. You have those those rules. In just like here, we are, we are proposing also some central architecture with some rules to allow for the scalability. I also like to bring this analogy of a highway. So. Uh, we, what we need here to, to get rid of this spaghetti of point-to-point -point connections is to actually place a highway here in the middle. A highway, we don't think so much about it, but it has some rules also. It, it has the, the ramps to access the highway. It has also some bridge crossing the highway, so the vehicles cannot be taller than, 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 the, than, the, than the space between the, the, the road and the bridge. And... The, the, so it doesn't matter actually what kind of vehicle, if it's important or if it's a truck, if it's a motorcycle, as long as it can go through the highway, you're good. And then it will take from place A to place B. Um, so this is important to understand because this will solve the connection and the connectivity in real time in the shop floor and will allow to scale. So just like a highway brings... Um, brings the progress to a region. The unified namespace will actually allow your, your company to keep growing in their digital transformation strategy. So talking here more technically, uh, the unified namespace also solves another problem that's normalization, contextualization. What do I mean? So here we solved actually the, the transport problem. But here we have another problem that is, let's say for one machine, for example, in, in the shop floor, we have several different systems that have already modeled uh, in a different way, in a redundant way, the same machine. So for example, uh, we have the ERP that has a lot of information about the machine and has, for example, the cost of the current, uh, product, the cost of the raw materials, and it also has uh, the, the, the next job that's going to run on that machine. You have the MES that knows how, ma how, how many was produced so far, or how was the production so far. You have the SCADA system that tells the, the, if the processes of this production were okay, if they were applying the correct temperatures. And let's say, if you want to get all this information together, you need to connect to all these different systems and you, you, it won't be useful to do point-to-point -point connections. Especially talking nowadays, in, uh, many people are still work in home office. There are, so for example, if you need to, to, to get some information, sometimes in large corporations, you need to connect to a VPN to access the MES and then another VPN to, con to connect to the ERP. And it takes a long time for you to get the simple information of real-time data in the shop floor. So you, you know uh, how many steps you, you, you have walked in today, but you don't know the current status on the shop floor. And also, many companies, like they, they want to rely on small startups to solve some challenges in an efficient way, uh, in an agile way. And with so many, so many uh, projects and so many things going on in the, nowadays in the corporations, you need a, a scalable way to provide this data. So if you imagine that for every company or for every project that you want to run internally in your company, in your shop floor, you will need to explain again to everyone what's that PLC, what's the registers on the PLC. The register one is temperature, the, and the register two is, is the speed and you have to look at the PDF to get this information. So basically uh, for uh, the OT guys, we can see here the OPC browser. This is what you get when you connect to a PLC or to a, a, 
uh, connectivity software like Kepler. Uh, but that doesn't mean so many things for like a data scientist guy. The data scientist guy expects something like this, a JSON object with properties, and then this can be historized and can be, can be sent to a to a business intelligence tool. You can you can run machine learning algorithms. And when you think also of machine learning, we think like just one thing. But in the future, you any company will be probably running tens or hundreds of uh, machine learning initiatives. And you need to think about how are you going to scale that. So the normalization means let's bring all together. It doesn't matter if the ERP called this machine as M1, the MES called this as machine one, the SCADA calls like the extruder. From now on, uh, our extruder, no, our press, from, but from now on, let's call it M1 press for all, all nodes that want to get information from this. And it doesn't matter uh, we, which one is the source, if it's the ERP or the SCADA, we're gonna have all this information as properties here, normalized by the single timestamp, okay? So here, just a, a different view of the unified namespace. So it helps connect OT and IT together. So bringing devices and systems on the shop floor to systems uh, that are usually being taken care by IT guys. Thank you. But now um, we are going to, to uh, through the demo. So here uh, on, on my VMware, I have three virtual machines that I created for this presentation. One is actually a uh, Kepler running here, simulating some devices and systems. One is the MQTT broker. So there's not, not too much to see here. As you can see, I'm using a simple IVMQ community edition. And then here I have Ignition, SCADA, and Hybyte. So let's go through following the flow. The idea here is we have tanks distributed all over the world in different locations, and we are monitoring the temperature uh, level on those tanks, and also the, the local temperature, temperature on the, on the city in which the tank is. We are also monitoring uh, which product is in each tank. So basically here, we can, we can think this here, the cities here, Florianópolis, Irvine, Porto Alegre, Sao Paulo, Zurich, they actually have the process data. So we are simulating PLC. We're getting that's here machine temperature level. And here, this one of products, we are uh, assuming this is, a, this is a ERP and it's telling me what, what product, what's the code of the product we have uh, stored in the tank, okay? So this is, we are actually using Kepler here and uh, MQTT on the IoT gateway. So I have each location and, and the ERP configured as a different MQTT client and they are connected to the Hive MQ broker. So they are connected here. Uh, Okay, so if we take a look here on this tool here, if you don't know, it's a great tool to, to debug and visualize MQTT data. So I have this MQTT Explorer connected to my MQTT broker, HiveMQ. And here I have each location creating for me one namespace. So let's say this location here, Zurich, is, has created a namespace, it's sending me the timestamp, uh, the value of cycle value, level 64, 55, uh, and the temperature, 477. Uh, it is still, it, it's much better than we what we usually get from uh, PLC without MQTT, let's say Oddbus, but still, it's like in context. And here we have the another namespace that's for the ERP. So the, in the ERP, it's telling me uh, what the code I am running 
of, of, of the code of, of the product stored on each tank. So 25447, 47444, here it goes. Uh, so what, what, where does it go now? It goes to high byte. So high byte here is the data ops tool. So while the, um, the, the MQTT broker is connecting, is connected to in an efficient way to all our devices and the system, the ERP, we are actually lacking the context. We need to, to bring this context together, mixing information from different sources of data. So here in high byte, we have connections. So we are connected to the MQTT. So let's say, for example, in the MQTT, we can create inputs and outputs. So inputs, let's take a look at here at this input called Zurich. So Zurich, I can read the input here. This is for like the bugging. Uh, anyway, I can see the same information that we saw on the MQTT Explorer. Okay, so we're gonna treat this information later. We also have here in connections, also in the input, we have the ERP. But we also have some other connections here. This is a local connection, OPC. Uh, this is a API. So uh, HiveMQ, HiveByte, sorry, allows us to connect not, not only using MQTT, but several other ways of connections, like API, REST API. Here I'm connecting to this API, openweathermap.org. Okay, and I have my inputs. So for example, for Zurich, I have more information here in which is the local temperature in Zurich, okay. And then we go to modeling. So since we're talking about tanks, we have five tanks. We, we created a model in which we, we, we're gonna have attributes. So the tank will have a name, a temperature of the material inside, cycle, level, and location temperature. That's location of the place as well as the product ID, which is the information that the ERP has. But this, uh, we're talking like a, about a class, okay? So how do we transform this into an object? So here we go to instances. So we have several instances here. Uh, we don't see ERP here because uh, ERP is, is actually, mm, we're not talking about the connections anymore. We are talking about the instances of things. So for example, if we go to Zurich, here again, we can see, okay, the name we set default to Zurich, so we are contextualizing here in the instances, but the temperature we are getting from the MQTT connection cycle also, uh, so we're getting the, the first value on the array for values, level, but the location temperature I'm getting from another connection, from the weather connection that was a REST API, and the product ID also comes from a different connection, that's the ERP on the, uh, and here the, uh, the element four in the array, which it's the, it's, it's related to this location, which is Zurich. So if I need to add it, for example, go here in details, you can see how it, how it looks like when you are editing. So we, we can also use expressions here, okay? I'm gonna show you how we can do this later. And then flows, finally flows. So for example, we're, so I, I was always showing Zurich. Let's show Zurich again. So what we are doing is using this uh, source Zurich as the input, so here input, I'm going to send the information to a target, spark plug, okay? I'm gonna do this every one second, always, but I could, if I, if I wanted to, to do it in a more efficient way, more refined way, I could change here when something changes, for example. So back to the connections, here's the spark plug connection. What's this spark plug? So basically it's MQTT also, but I'm using this connection. If, if you see, I have no input. I just have outputs. So what it means? On the instance, I'm mixing together ERP information, process data information, and weather information, for example, for Zurich. And in the flow, I'm getting this information from this instance and, and sending it 
using my spark plug uh, connector to back to the MQTT. Okay, so spark plug for those do, that don't know is a standard that basically tells uh, how to standardize how to, how is how is the standard for the payload on the MQTT because the MQTT uh, is about the protocol, but the information can be anything, can be a XML, can be a JSON object. So, but how do you structure this JSON object in a way that all OT tools, all automation tools can understand this data? Okay, so that's why Sparkplug comes to point. So with this information here, then we can see, we can go to, to let's go back first to MQTT Explorer so I can see. If first I had shown you we had different namespaces, now here with our Spark plug connector in high byte, we created our unified namespace inside the MQTT broker. So here I can see the tanks. So if I go to data, I can see here data, for example, data from Zurich. It's not readable here uh, because some, some characters here specific for the way Sparkplug is working. But the important thing is Sparkplug ready tools, they understand it and it saves us a lot of time. So here I have a Ignition SCADA vision window and I had model here as this, this template. So for each location I had shown before, I have this information here being monitored in real time, not by UPC, but by MQTT using that Spark plug. And the interesting thing is, let's say, uh, here is just a simple example, okay? You could create a much more sophisticated, uh, sophisticated window that could um, automatically add new, new, new tanks as you, as, you, as you create them. But the important thing, we don't need to actually come here as we usually do on, on industrial systems, like taking a PDF or an Excel spreadsheet, reading, okay, what's this register on Modbus? What does it mean? Is it temperature? And then we manually create tags here. For example, if you see, I'm gonna delete Zurich here. And when I delete Zurich, look, I am literally really going to delete this entire folder, okay, that has, several tags and properties okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna delete it you see there it created a, a short communication problem here but it reappeared so why it reappeared because uh of spark plug b and mqtt so ignition scatter can understand spark plug b so as it receives information of uh let's say tags that it doesn't have it will create it, it will understand. So here we can have information, for example, it, should this tag be historized or not? Uh, what's the scale to be used with this tag? All this information can be added as properties. And the most important thing is uh, you can create self-aware systems. So as you grow, let's say you started with a proof of concept, five machines, but then you're not talking about five anymore. You're talking about 20 more per day along one year that's going to be your, your entire project so you need to be fast you need to 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 be fast with the demands you're gonna receive from your end users and you need to be fast to add this these new machines these new tanks to, you, to your product and with a self-aware system you can uh, you don't need to worry so much about it as long as you have programmed it in the right way and you are using spark plug b And that's it. That's it, because I uh, what I wanted to show so far. And so just recapping here on the demo, we started with the capware. So it's a different server. For each tank we had in the ERP, we had different MQTT clients connected to the broker, which is here. And here on this machine, we are actually contextualizing the data. We are getting this raw data, these namespaces that are separate, condensing them in a single namespace using iByte and showing in ignition. And let me just show you one more thing 
for example, what about if you need to do some transformations? So let's say local temperature in Zurich is 11 degrees Celsius. So let's go here to high byte. Let's say we know that the, the sensor uh, is, it, it needs some adjust. And we go here on modeling instances, Zurich. So let's change there. Let's add temperature plus 10. Or I could as well create actually a new tag here. Okay. So as we go here, temperature is Let me see. Set. It didn't change. Wait a second. No, sorry. Don't you edit this? Could I can because I, I actually did in the wrong place. Location temperature. Okay. I just added to the, the temperature of the material. Okay, here it goes, 21 degrees Celsius now in Zurich. So you can see all these transformations and in, in, in the new version of Hybyte, also the 2.3, they, they are coming with aggregations. So you can do aggregations in real time also. And many more features are coming. Okay, now I'm stop sharing. Okay, uh, thank you so much for putting together such a fantastic uh, presentation and demonstration, uh, Mario. I'm sure the Welcome. audience will be having a lot of questions. So I'm going to turn it over to you on the audience. Uh, if you've got any questions, you can send them uh, through to Mario uh, through his social media channels, which I'll link in the description below. And also you can leave us a comment. We'll try to get to as many of your questions as possible. Yes, I'll be happy to answer. 